Hi guys. Okay, so we are going to talk about classification paragraphs tonight. Um, my intention is that you're going to get the, the lecture part of our class tonight, and then tomorrow when you get to class, we'll review what we talked about here, and then we will start applying that in our own writing. So everybody needs to have this in front of you, and I handed it to you today in class. A classification paragraph starts with a main idea, and then it has supporting details that help hold up that main idea. So in this way, a main idea tells you what should be in a paragraph. Okay, only things that support it should be there. If not, then they don't belong, and that's not the paragraph for them. Um, there are some steps to classifying for a paragraph. Let me back up first, though. Um, the reason we're going over this structure of a paragraph is because it's a paragraph that you might use in your writing for your perseverance interview. So you're interviewing for um, someone who's persevered, and then you're going to write up um, a short essay on that person. And so this is a type of paragraph that you might be using, and so I want to make sure that you know the structure of it. Okay, so back to where I was going. There are some steps to classifying. First of all, you have to know your topic. Okay, now your topic is going to be very broad. Okay, it's going to be an umbrella term. It can be something very broad like sports, relatives, and if you notice right here, it says example topics. Let's see if you guys can see it. That's what I'm looking at, okay? So um, topics are very broad. The example that they give you are American Kennel Club non-sporting dogs. That's a pretty broad topic because there are lots of dogs that would fit under that um, category. So after you have your topic, then you need to focus on a method of classifying. And that's just a way to narrow your topic down. Because if we just talk about something very vague, like American Kennel Club non-sporting dogs, we don't know what it is you want to tell us about them. There are lots of different kinds. You could tell us how to care for them. You could tell us the positives and negatives of caring for them as a pet. We have to know more specifics. Okay? So the method of classifying is how we're going to narrow our topic. So I'm going to narrow it by picking three types of dogs, okay? The Boston Terrier, Bulldog, and a Dalmatian, okay? Now I have more specific information. So a classification paragraph structure is going to start with your topic sentence, which is going to be your topic, and it's going to tell your reader what three things you're going to explain to them in that paragraph. Then your supporting details are going to tell me about the category. So, for example, bulldogs. You're going to tell me something about them. Um, and maybe you're going to have one or two sentences that tells about the bulldog. And then at the final, um, the final sentence of your paragraph should be what's called a concluding sentence. And that basically sums up everything that you have read um, in that paragraph. It restates the main idea, but it kind of just brings the paragraph to a close. Okay, so for example, on here, um, they have chosen the topic of music, or country music, I should say, more specifically. Okay, country music is the topic. And then when it comes down here to method of classifying, they've given some um, examples. Okay, well, how can I narrow country music? Well, I can write about people who listen to country music. I can um, write about the types of country music, female singers of country music, so on and so forth. So basically, I'm just narrowing my topic. Okay, so once I have a topic, and then I have it narrowed down by the method of classifying, then the next step is I'm going to break it into further into categories. So for example, if my method I chose was types of country music, then three categories I might choose are um, bluegrass, country rock, and country pop. Okay, those are three specific categories within the country music genre. Okay. I'm going to give you a second. What I want you to do is read writing the paragraph. Okay, it's bolded. And I want you to pay attention as you're reading this to um, how to form this classification paragraph. There are specific things that you need in the paragraph, and I want you to be able to tell me what they are. So I want you to pause me now for a second, read it, and then press play when you're ready for um, me to start talking again. Okay, I'm going to assume that you have read writing the paragraph now. All right, so what you should have taken from that paragraph is that you must begin your sentence with a topic sentence. Okay, that's 
it's expressing your main idea and telling your reader what you're going to talk about. Then in your detail sentences, you are going to tell me each of the categories. So my first category would be about bluegrass country, okay? And I would tell maybe something about it. And then my next one would be country rock, and I would tell something about country rock. And then my last one would be country pop, and I would tell details about country pop. And then the final thing would be that concluding sentence. And I would sum up everything I've talked about, which is um, types of country music. Okay? All right. So next, you'll notice that there are three paragraphs. Rock music, types of friends, and shoppers. And I'm just simply going in order in your packet, so please follow along. Um, you're going to be, we're going to do some of this together. But basically what we're going to practice doing is identifying the main idea, um, the details, and the concluding sentence, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little bit of time. I want you to read through rock music. And when you're finished, I'm going to talk about how I determined the main idea, um, the concluding sentence, and the supporting details, okay? So pause me. When you're done reading just rock music, I want you to press play again, okay? Okay. So you finish reading rock music. Now, if I'm going to look at this paragraph, I'm going to think, okay, well, a topic sentence or a main idea can usually be found in a couple places. Usually they're found either at the beginning of the sentence, they can be found in the middle sometimes, and they can be found at the end. However, I'm looking for a sentence that tells what I'm going to be reading about. Well, the very first sentence says, there are three different types of rock music, alternative rock, classic rock, and hard rock, also known as metal. Well, that's my topic sentence because it tells the reader what three things I'm going to be reading about. So the very first sentence I'm going to underline because that's my main idea. Then as I keep reading, um, I know what I'm looking for for my supporting details. I know that they're going to tell me about alternative rock. They're going to tell me about classic rock. And they're also going to tell me about hard rock. So those are my three supporting details. And then I know my concluding sentence needs to come near the end, and it's summarizing what I've already read. So if I look at the very last sentence, it doesn't matter what your preference is. Each different style of rock music is unique on its own. Is that really summing up or bringing the paragraph to a close? Yeah, it says that it doesn't matter your preference, but um, each style of rock music is unique. You know, they're putting it back on you. Whatever you like is fine. It, it's just bringing everything to a, an end. So that is my concluding sentence. Okay, what you are going to do for tomorrow. You are going to read through types of friends and shoppers. I want you to underline the main idea. I want you to underline the concluding sentence, if there is one. And I want you to be able to tell me what the three supporting details, if, if there are three, there might be more, okay, are in each paragraph. Okay, be prepared because that's where we will begin in class tomorrow, okay? We will see you tomorrow. Bye.